hear them shout. Now they're marching all about. It's Saturday, July the 5th, and this is Weekend Pulse. I'm Martin Miller. And I'm Joey Hudson. Each week, we'll put our thumb on the heartbeat of the communities from western North Carolina to the upstate to northwestern Georgia. And it's been a fun fourth, Joey. I tell you, Martin, we had a blast yesterday. We were up at uh, Caesar's Head. It was um, nice and cool up there. Great. And uh, had a wonderful time celebrating the 4th of July. It's just it's uh, one of my favorite holidays mine too always has been uh, my first art contest i entered at, with a fourth of july theme and the the piece at the ripe old age of seven years old uh yes yes so um we hope you enjoyed your fourth of july as well and we appreciate you joining us on this uh fourth of july weekend spending a few minutes with us for a uh, weekend pulse and we hope you'll join us every saturday here at 12 noon on conservative talk 94.5 wgtk fm you can always call us at 877-235-9405. We hope you'll like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Talk945, and check out our website at conservativetalk945.com. Martin, even though we had a great time yesterday and it was a Friday, it's a bit unusual when uh, the 4th falls uh, on a weekday like that, but we still have a whole weekend ahead of us. We sure do. All sorts of things still going on. Events, uh, as usual, is one of the things that we cover here on Weekend Pulse. Tomorrow in Spartanburg, make sure that you make time for Art Market. This is a bazaar of locally handcrafted items by regional artisans, and they're complementing it with a free uh, concert by Vince DeMore. Each week, they are uh, highlighting area artists, singer-songwriter concerts, runs from 2 to 4 p.m. Most galleries and museums are open with free admission so that uh, you can take advantage of the Art Market. Also, a little bit further south, we've got the festival in Greenwood called the South Carolina Festival of Discovery. It's all about barbecue and blues. It's their premier event, and it's sponsored by Uptown Greenwood Development Corporation. This will be their 14th year, and they've got 90-plus groups that they are expecting to participate. It's a discovery of food, fun, music, and amusement rides. A lot of opportunity to learn about history, the traditions of the area, folklore, arts and crafts, music, and the culture of the South Carolina upstate. So two quick things to talk about there, Joey, as our uh, holiday weekend continues. And as we said, there uh, there is plenty left to do on this 4th of July weekend. We, we always think of 4th of July and we think of fireworks. I mean, Absolutely. That, that's, I think you just have to do that. It, it, I, don't, I don't know that that's a law. but It is in my uh, family. I, I, think, I, I think there's probably some type of penalty involved if you don't uh, have some type of fireworks. At least a week's life. worth of pouting yes. around our house. And, <laughs> and even though uh, most of it is done on the 4th of July, I know my nephews up, up at the mountains uh, – they like to ration them, so yes. uh, so they'll do a few on the Fourth of July, and in this case, they're they're planning for some more tonight and some more on Sunday. They, right. They've got to make them last the whole weekend. Oh, sure. Uh, and even though fireworks can be great fun, I noticed a, a story just the other day, and I really hadn't thought that much about it, but uh, they can be somewhat scary for our pets. Absolutely. And so uh, let's take a minute to listen to this clip, just so that you you're aware of this. And uh, let's keep our pets safe during this holiday season. With the 4th of July just days away, local veterinarians are warning people about the hazards the holiday can bring to pets. A number of burn injuries in animals can often increase this time of year. As folks start setting off fireworks or sparklers. And if your dog or cat doesn't get hurt, it may still just run away. Area vets say the number of missing pets can spike this season when dogs and cats take off after they're spooked by the sound of fireworks. I've heard of animals jumping out of car windows when the fireworks are nearby. So you should just always anticipate that your pet may react in a way that you're not expecting and have them in a good, calm, secure environment. The North Asheville Animal Hospital says folks with jumpy pets have a couple of options. You can ask your vet for sedatives that could help keep the pet calm. There are also body suits for smaller animals to help make them feel secure. Or if you're headed out of the house for the fourth, turn on the radio. Hopefully that sound will distract them. So that is a good reminder that we uh, we need to keep our little furry friends in mind as uh, all of these noises and flashes and all are taking place with the fireworks around, around the weekend. It can be very scary for them, sure. Yes. 
Martin, let's take a few minutes. We've we've talked about some of the fun things that we've done and all, but this is really uh, a serious type uh, celebration because uh, the, what we're celebrating is a serious thing, our, our freedom. And um, the, the whole idea, of course, is that uh, this was when the Declaration of Independence was signed. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If you take a look at some of the things uh, surrounding, the, the history surrounding the Declaration of Independence, there's a lot of interesting facts there. Uh, one of those is I, I read where there's a little note written on the back of the original copy, and it's not some secret map or code or anything. It's just a simple handwritten uh, note saying, Original Declaration of Independence dated 4th July 1776. Now, no one knows who wrote this. It's probably added just as a label to the document uh, for storage for many years. But um, once it was written and had been signed, printer John Dunlap was asked to make 200 copies to be distributed throughout the colonies. And today, those uh, Dunlap broadsides, as they're called, are extremely rare and valuable. In 1989, someone discovered a previously unknown Dunlap broadside, and it was sold for over $8 million wow. in 2000. Now, no telling what it's worth now, but... Uh, Currently, there are only 26 known surviving copies of the Dunlap broadsides today. Wow, that's incredible. One of the other, well, misconceptions about the Declaration is that it was signed on July 4th, 1776. In fact, it was formally declared on July 2nd, a date that John Adams believed would be the most memorable epoch in the history of America. But on July 4th is when Congress approved the final text, and it actually wasn't signed until August 2nd, 1776. You know, after Jefferson wrote his first draft of the Declaration, the other members of the Declaration Committee and the Continental Congress made 86 changes to Jefferson's draft, including shortening the overall length by more than a fourth. You know, two of those changes were additional references to God. Jefferson had put in two references. Congress wanted four. And... You know, let's talk about some of the signers of the Declaration uh, right. of Independence. Uh, two of the youngest signers uh, uh, of the Declaration were both from South Carolina, Thomas Lynch, Jr. Mm -hmm. and Edward Rutledge of South Carolina. They were both born in 1749, which made them around 26 when they signed the Declaration. Most of the other signers were in their 40s and 50s at that time. Right. We also had two presidents die on the same July 4th. We've had three presidents in total die on July 4th. But Thomas Jefferson and John Adams both died on July 4th, 1826, the 50th anniversary of the vote to approve the Declaration of Independence. Yes, and, um, and we also talk about the 4th of July, and, and it is a time to celebrate our freedoms. But what does that really mean? And, right. and think about the price that a lot of people paid that we can celebrate those freedoms. Uh, 56 men who signed the Declarations of Independence. And, and let's talk a little bit about the fate that they uh, suffered as a result of being those 56 men and, and some of the things that – it, it wasn't an easy time back then. No. They knew at that point that the King of England would consider this treason. That was punishable by death. Five of the signers were captured by the British as traitors, and they were tortured before they died. Right. Twelve of them had their homes ransacked and burned for that uh, action. And two of them lost their sons uh, serving in the Revolutionary War, and another had two sons that, who were captured. Well, and I found it interesting that nine of the 56 actually fought and died from wounds or hardships from the Rev War. You know, when, when they signed the Declaration of Independence, they actually signed and pledged their lives— their fortunes, uh, and their honor uh, in, in some ways. And you ask, well, what kind of men were these? And a lot of people, uh, you think about today and you think about some of our leaders and politicians, and they're generally men of, uh, of wealth or higher educated. Right. And that, that's the same with them. These weren't just farmers. These were men who had good lives. They didn't have to put themselves in this position. But they were concerned with doing the right thing. Well, speaking of doing the right thing, Martin, you had a great opportunity to catch up with a real hero this past week uh, over in Greer, Cliff Harps. And he told you his story of actually 
being on the front lines and knowing firsthand what it means to defend these freedoms that we've been speaking of. You're right. So stay with us. We're going to take a quick break here on Weekend Pulse, and we'd ask you to join the conversation at 877-235-9405. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and check out our website at Conservative Talk 945. Coming up after the break, Martin spends a few minutes with one of our real heroes, Cliff Harps, over in Greer. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Our last night on shore. Conservative Talk, 94.5. Don't buy golf equipment where you hit into a net. Try them out outdoors at the Eagle Zone, the most trusted name in golf for 25 years. Stop by the Eagle Zone for all your golfing needs. 8000 Pelham Road, Greenville, South Carolina. Welcome back to Weekend Pulse. I'm Joey Hudson, and Martin Miller is in our guest studio and will be joining us very soon with a special guest. But first, we want to thank you for being with us and spending a few minutes of your July 4th weekend uh, with Weekend Pulse. And we ask you to join the conversation by calling 877-235-9405. We hope you will like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Talk945, and take a look at our website, conservativetalk945.com when you have a few minutes and we try to post things that we think are interesting to you and the community and are very uh, helpful to you as you plan your weekend and plan your week. As we talked about in our earlier segment, this is a very special weekend since the 4th of July is our country's birthday, July 4th, 1776. That was the day our country's founders declared our independence from Great Britain. This meant we would no longer follow the orders of the Britain's king, and to do this at that time was very dangerous. At the time, Britain had one of the world's strongest armies in the world, and to go against the king was a crime punishable by death. But our founding fathers decided it was worth the risk of war to win the freedom to govern ourselves. And it did lead to war, and in 1783, the new United States won that war, known as the Revolutionary War. Unfortunately, there have been other wars since, and our freedoms are constantly challenged from abroad and sometimes within our own country. And in order for us to continue to protect those freedoms, we rely on the men and women who serve in our armed forces. Those brave individuals put their lives on the line so that we may remain free. Martin was able to sit down this week with one of those great heroes, Cliff Harps in Greer. He's a brave veteran of World War II, and Cliff tells us firsthand how fighting in a war truly makes you realize just how valuable those everyday freedoms we all share, yet sometimes take for granted, are certainly worth fighting for. Let's join Martin's conversation with the brave veteran Cliff Harps of Greer. 
Thanks, Joey. Weekend Pulse has quite an honor today. We have the opportunity to talk with Cliff Harps, a person who truly knows what Independence Day means and has been in an Independence Day of his own during World War II, waiting to go into Berlin with the Third Armor. Uh, Cliff had the opportunity to hear on Armed Forces Radio that the Russians had crossed the Elbe River, and the next day, Germany surrendered. Quite an opportunity, uh, quite an opportunity for Weekend Pulse to get to talk with you, Cliff. Thank you so much for joining us for a few minutes today. It's my pleasure, and uh, I'm honored to have an opportunity to say anything that boosts uh, Greer. I am so happy with the way they've accepted me here. And, uh, well, the, one of the things that I hear, heard a couple of times, I didn't pay much attention to it. But they say I'm as well known as the mayor. And I've noticed in the past year, since the stomping grounds opened, they're right. I don't understand it, but I love it. (laughs) Cliff is an 88-year-old resident of Greer, and I can attest to the fact that he is an icon in downtown. And he has the opportunity quite often to lead veterans walks when the city has an opportunity with Freedom Blast and with the other festivals that go on. They honor veterans at every opportunity. Cliff is always at the head of that line, and we're thankful for that. As we mentioned, he's a World War II veteran, served with the 75th Infantry and was a radio man with a company commander. Now, I understand you've got a a distinction and all of that frontline duty of never being wounded. Quite a a unique situation in World War II, wasn't it, Cliff? Yes, it was. I'm uh, only, there's only one way I can thank the person responsible. That's my Lord Jesus Christ. I knew that I was going to come back. I thought I might be wounded, but I knew after going through them first battles that I would come home. And we're thankful you did. Cliff, you started earlier, as you and I were talking before the interview, to talk to me about uh, the duty you felt as a young man. 1943, knowing that you didn't plan for a military career, you waited to be drafted. Tell us a little more about those experiences, Cliff. Well, I was anxious to do my part because our class in high school that graduated that year, a lot of my friends had already enlisted. But I had no intention of being a military individual. And so I waited to be drafted because I wanted to do what I had to do. And... uh, That's the only way I knew how to do it without signing up for four years, which wasn't me. (laughs) But you obviously saw your duty and you did that. We are so thankful for your service. Now, understand that you're happy to be back in the upstate. Um, About that time in 1943, you you kind of had some experiences uh, just outside of Spartanburg, didn't you? Yes, sir. Uncle Sam, when he drafted me, put me on a train in Erie, Pennsylvania. I grew up in Albion, Pennsylvania. It's in Erie County. And that train stopped at Camp Croft on the south edge of Spartanburg. I guess it's the south. I'll just say on the edge of Spartanburg. (laughs) I don't know what direction it was. (laughs) But uh, I was naturally like anybody else. had no idea. That's the furthest I'd ever been away from home, and uh, but I knew whatever was to come, I would do it. That's fantastic. Again, thank you for your service. Now, I understand when you left the United States, you uh, got on a, a fairly famous ship, uh, maybe not one you wanted to get back on after that first trip, uh, but tell us about getting from uh, the, the U.S. over to the theater of operation. Well, we went to New York, and they put us on the Queen Elizabeth. And you know that only took us a little over six days to cross the ocean. And we had no fear of the submarines because they couldn't catch us, and they had no way of getting in front of us because it was a zigzag thing. And uh, we ended up landing at Glasgow, Scotland. So if they were expecting us to go to England, they missed it. (laughs) A good opportunity to uh, avoid that type of conflict on the sea. So 
you told me that you started on the front lines uh, near the border of Holland. That was February 27th, am I correct? Yes, sir. That that was my first day, and uh, it it's kind of humor. We'll, we'll get a little humor in it. I'm sitting there. We're uh, getting acquainted with the guys. We're playing cards. All of a sudden, I'm the only guy sitting at the table, and any any aircraft fire started hitting around us, and uh, that was my first day under fire. So I got a ten dollar raise the next day, and the following day, March first, was my nineteenth birthday. Wow, three days on the line, and it's your birthday. Quite an experience, I'm sure. Easy to remember. <laughs> Was there much of a celebration? Just thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. So now you were on the front line. You were in active uh, combat until around May 8th. Tell me the story again about the Rhine River. Well, at the Rhine River, we had to wait for them to build a bridge across there. And uh, the, the, at that time... We didn't worry about bombs because the Germans no longer could fly a plane. They didn't have any gas. So going across the river, we walked across the bridge that was made to carry tanks across, and we walked on that. And by the time I got to shore on the other side in France, at Le Havre, I said to the buddy beside me, I said, if that's the way I have to go home, I'm staying over here. <laughs> I was never so sick of my life as I was going across the English Channel on an LST. I hear that's quite a rough ride, so I can imagine. <laughs> now, Cliff, you, you saw a lot of things. You've had a lot of time through your life to see other experiences besides uh, the, the Second World War. As we think about Independence Day, as we, we think about what that means, tell us in your own words what it means to a veteran like yourself. Well, we had the best country in the world, and I knew I had to do my part, and I wanted to do my part, and I asked the good Lord to bring me back, and he did. But uh, how could you not want to defend this country and I am very unhappy with how the politicians have gone recently but it's in the Lord's hand I can't do anything about that well I think it's safe to say that you've done your duty and really by your willingness to talk to us and the willingness to talk to those in Greer and the places that you go I think you're still doing your duty we appreciate that we appreciate the time that you spent with us today on Weekend Pulse and I hope we can ask you back to do this some more I'll come back anytime at Greer Greer has just been 110% for me and I'm stunned by the fact that I've been received just so openly by everybody. I don't walk down the street where well, people don't stop and talk to me. And I, I never had that experience in my hometown. A little different here in the South, wouldn't you say? Oh, I love the South. We love you too, Cliff. Thank you so much. It's been great talking with you. Thank you, Martin, and thank you again, Cliff, for joining us on this special edition of Weekend Pulse as we celebrate our nation's birthday the 4th of july weekend we'll be right back after the srn news we ask you to stay with us call us at 877-235-9405 like us on facebook follow us on twitter and check out our website conservative talk 945.com we'll be right back after this quick break (laughs) 